Welcome back to Let's Play Amy Rose and Sonic 1! This is your commentator, Fyron. Isn't that an intro epic? Well, not epic enough. We need to make it more epic in following episodes. What do you say? Anyway, back on topic. We finally arrived in the Marble Zone, which isn't really my, f my, uh, my most favorite level. Kind of because it's full of dick moves, with flying bees and the spiky worm, whatever the hell those things are called. And of course, all the lava, and the spewing bits of it that come out every now and then. It's all about memorization when it comes to this level. That's all I can really say. And the irony is, every level that ends with it, that has like an even number, is for some reason is the most difficult, or... I don't know, I can't really describe it. It's just, it's just like every level in, the, in this game that has an even number is just a pain in the ass compared to every level that's an odd number where it's super easy. But, no, you need not fear, this level is still pretty easy. I mean, the levels aren't really that long except for the third act. And even then, all it really takes is just smart play. And luckily, since Amy's not all about speed and because she has all these cool moves, it's pretty easy getting around. At least that's how I feel, anyway. Anyway, since uh, nothing interesting's going on right now, I guess I'll go ahead and discuss and uh, more about Amy Rose. Why not? Now, I'm pretty sure most of you either have never paid Amy any mind or just hate her guts, as I already mentioned before in the previous episode. Reason for this is because of how Sega's characterizer in the games to be some sort of annoying brat that seems to cry about everything. I mean, next to Cream, she's quite kind of whiny. Yet in the comics, she seems much more mature and much more uh, reliable as, as a character. I mean, I actually I've read the comics and she's a lot more of a she's so much better in the comics. I, I'm just really astounded by why they didn't really bother with that kind of characterization in the games. I would love it if she had more of a, a role in the games and was more of a badass. Like, she was able to just go out there and kick some serious ass. Because the moves in Sonic... The moves that she has in this game, in Sonic Advance 1, Sonic Adventure 1, she has some really cool moves that would suit, like, a, a stealth game or something like that. I mean, Knuckles is the beat-em-up. Tails is, like... Um, Machinery, mechs. I like to see Amy as being a spy, similar to Solid Snake or something. Going around, kicking butt, sneaking around, using her more maneuverabil maneuverable abilities to get around. Whereas Sonic, of course, he's all about speed. Now, I just, I mean, I read the comics in, in, uh, they in the Archie comics, she's still pretty much in love with Sonic, unless it's, uh, I think. In the earlier issues, of course. In the later issues, uh, Mobius X years, I'm pretty sure she gave up, considering now that Sonic's married to Sally. Uh, it's a bit of a spoiler, anyway. But in Sonic the comic, she actually moved on, I think, more or less. She became much more independent. A true tomboy, basically. And I like that. I like the fact that she actually moved on. I think the reason why she's so immature in the game is just because of her age. She's, like, 12 years old. And... To say the least, I doubt that's like the most mature age for anybody. I mean, Sonic's like freaking 16, I think, or 15 or 16, and yet he acts like a freaking... Like he knows everything. And then he believes he can beat anyone. He goes in there without thinking. Of course, he's not as stupid as Knuckles, who just like to... Who, who just prefers to uh, believe the bad guys every time they tell him. Particularly Eggman, but we all know that. But... Back to Amy. I really wish, I really want to see her have a more, you know, a more central role in the games. Speaking of other characters and having roles in games, the only thing, I really like the streak that Sega has going on, because lately they've been really putting out better games. Ever since Sonic Unleashed, they've been putting out better and better games, and they're finally putting Sonic back on the top. The problem is, there's not really that many playable characters, it's just Sonic. I mean, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations, what do they all have in common? It's just Sonic as the playable character. Granted, Sonic Generations gave you play uh, control over classic Sonic, but that's it. The thing is, I think the reason they got rid of the, uh, play the playable modes of other characters is because there were probably complaints about that. Either that, or Sega just 
just felt unsure about that because I actually had a lot of fun playing as the different characters in the adventure series. Sonic, uh, Sonic Adventure 1, I enjoyed all of them except for Big. I hated Big's mode. I hated his gameplay. It was just so annoying. But Amy's? I actually liked Amy's because it was all about getting away from the bad guy and sneaking around and solving puzzles and all that jazz. Really fun stuff. It was a definitely, definitely a cool break from uh, Sonic's fast-paced action or Knuckles treasure hunting and Tails basically racing the hell out of anybody. And I oh yeah, Gamma's awesome shooting gallery. And then Sonic Adventure 2 came and she got pushed back into a minor role where she basically disappears in cutscenes. And although she still is kind of important in some ways, she doesn't really have that much importance anymore. Although she is playable on multiplayer, where she's practically the most overpowered character in the racing mode. I swear to god. 30 rings to basically free someone for 30 seconds, that's just cheap. Me and, John, me and my brother used to make jokes all the time in Sonic Adventure 2 when I, when we made Shadow and Amy race. We would call Amy the new ultimate life form because of the fact that she could easily beat Shadow like it was no problem whatsoever. Even if she wasn't as fast, she just she just wiped the floor with him, I swear. It's, it's sad. But anyhow, let's go back to talking about the reasons why Sega suddenly decided, hey, let's go ahead and dump all the other characters and make them pretty much impractical, unnecessary, minor characters in the Sonic games. I think it all has to do with Sonic 2006, in my honest opinion. Because, as if anyone know, as anyone might know, the Amigo gameplay in that game was awful. Just plain awful. For anyone who doesn't know what Amigo, what the Amigos are, basically they were little helpers in for the main characters in that game. Main characters being Sonic, Shadow, and Silver. And the Amigos for each of those characters were Sonic. For, for Sonic it was Tails and Knuckles. For Silver it was Amy and Blaze. And for Shadow it was Rouge and Omega. Now for the most part, the uh, main character's gameplay was more or less playable. Aside from the occasional, rather unfair glitch. But Amigo gameplay? I mean, they just took it way too far. I mean, Knuckles was practically unplayable because he would get stuck to practically every wall, and no matter what direction you press the D-pad, he would still go in the complete opposite direction, or worse. Rouge? A little more fine-tuned. Plus, her glide didn't descend as sharply. Omega was probably the most playable, but going to the main character now of this game, Amy Rose, she was like in the middle. She was playable, but her abilities were like downgraded to the point where they were useless. And I think it was just more of a progress and hit things with your hammer ability. I'm not really sure whether or not... I, it's been a long time since I played 2006, obviously, because uh, you know why. And I really was disappointed. I actually was all excited about the idea of getting to play as Amy because her gameplay was awesome in Sonic Adventure 1. It was like incredibly addictive. And which and there were so few levels in Sonic Adventure 1 where she had gameplay. She only had three levels. I mean, what the hell? So the fact that she was going to be in Sonic, you know, Sonic 10 and 6, which was technically Sonic Adventure 3 in my opinion, was awesome. And just like the rest of the game, it was just a huge disappointment. And of course, I'm guessing a lot of people really, really hated it too, so they decided, you know what, let's not take any more chances, let's just dump the other characters and go with Sonic by himself. And so you have a bunch of games afterwards that just have Sonic as the main character. Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations. Pretty much all Sonic by himself. Sure enough, the other characters are there, but they're not really... You can't play as them, sadly. It really is sad. I really want to see the characters back in the games. And see their unique gameplay put back in action. I want to go treasure hunting with Knuckles again, or beat him up, or doing beat him ups with Knuckles. Like, going around beating the shit out of everything you see. Or racing with Tails, or blowing stuff up with Tails' mechas. Or, uh, let's see. Uh, or basically doing stealth gameplay, or sneaking around or maneuverability or puzzles with Amy. Though that was really fun. I assure you, that was probably the some of the funnest stuff aside from Sonic's traditional awesome high speed gameplay. Maybe someday. 
considering the role they're on right now, I'm pretty sure they might be starting to uh, go back. I'm, I'm pretty sure they might be going back to the things that people loved about the Sonic series. Maybe someday. Check out that headbang. She's got the beats and she can't fight it. Even though there's lava right underneath her, she can still bob that head like a boss. Speaking of which, we're getting rather close to the end of the zone, but it's still another four minutes from now, I think. So we, I think we got more time for whatever topic I have on the mind. Let's see. Let's see. No. So let's talk about Sonic Advance, I guess. Sonic Advance. I had not gotten a chance to play any of the Sonic Advance games until somewhere when I was thir no, not 13, actually, yeah, 13 or 14 years old. And I didn't get a chance to play the first two until I was 17. Now, I'll tell you straight up, I actually loved the Sonic Advance games, except for maybe the second or third somewhat, because they were just way too complicated in terms of getting the Chaos Emeralds, and because they were way too fast-paced for my taste. Sonic Advance 1 was like the perfect mix of like new stuff and classic. It had this, it had the slow platforming feel, but you could speed through stuff with Sonic or whatever, or go gliding with Knuckles, flying with Tails, or using Amy's awesome abilities that you see, uh, that you're witnessing right now in this game right now. And I enjoyed playing as Amy. Unfortunately, though, they kind of traded out her some of her abilities for a spin dash in Sonic Advance 2, which was disappointing. Because then people started calling her basically just another Sonic, because that's basically what she was, another Sonic. She had basically the same exact movesets. She somewhat got her abilities back in Sonic Advance 3 because they 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 traded it with uh, her partners, whoever she partnered with, because they would get their own Pico Pico hammers, among other things. And, yeah. Sonic Advance 3... Uh, it was a really cool concept. I like the Advance series, but Sonic Advance 1 is probably my most favorite, just because it's most like the classic games. And of course, Amy's in there. Oh, Amy! If I had the balls to squeal like a fanboy on the commentary right now, I would. But I can't, because I have dignity, unlike most people. But I have the balls to admit that I like My Little Pony. There. You like that? Yeah, I thought so. Anyhow, back to what the gameplay is going at. I believe we are starting to near the end of this. Just gotta get through some more obstacles, which shouldn't be too difficult. It's just a matter of avoiding fire. Although, unfortunately, I didn't do so well there. Now, you may be wondering, why are you bothering with holding all those rings in the third act? There's, you can't go to the special stages in the third act, you silly boy! Well, there's a reason why. I decided I needed to collect as many lives as possible. For, I think, a, uh, for an extremely good reason. Uh, somewhere Labyrinth Zone, which you'll be seeing in the fourth episode. But for now, we have to deal with a boss. Which I personally call the Lava Shitter. Oh, and that was just a nickname I came up with right now, but whatever. He's pretty simplistic, very predictable, and I took the harder approach, but even the harder approach is easy to do in this guy. Just hit a jump. And repeat. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. I don't think, I mean, I don't need Omachel popping up and saying, to hit the boss, jump and hit him before he arrives at the platform. Oh, whatever, we've beaten the zone. That's about all the time we have for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed my commentary. There will be other episodes coming up soon. Look forward to it. This has been your commentator, Fire On, and I'll be seeing you soon. Sayonara.